Hey everybody, this is Clock and Modular Arithmetic. So this is sort of an add-on to Chapter 4. It's not actually in Chapter 4 in your book, but it is sort of an additional section that meets some of the requirements that you uh, need for this class for Credit A and for um, the test for teaching eventually. So Clock Arithmetic, we do a lot, right? You calculate things on the clock all the time, and clock math works differently than regular addition and subtraction. It's actually more similar to what we do in bases than anything else. It's just a little different even from that. So say a doctor prescribes you an antibiotic. He says take it every eight hours. You take the first one at 7 o'clock in the morning. You can calculate when to take the next two. You can um, calculate if you want something to be done at 8 p.m. and it needs to cook for 12 hours, when to put it in. Or like if you want to have Thanksgiving dinner at five, when does the turkey go in? Math like this also works with things like odometers, you know, less so now because they're digital, but in older cars where, you know, they only had numbers up to 999,999. And then, you know, if your car got that far, you started over at zero and it counted again. You only had so far to go on a clock. It's very similar. Like we can count from 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and then we're back at 12. We're back where we started. So we can use the clock to, to add, to subtract, to multiply, to divide, actually. We can count, you know, if we wanted to take that pill at 7 a.m., we took the first one, and we have to take the next one eight hours later, we can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven, eight, and we take the next one at three o'clock. So seven plus eight on the clock is three. This plus in a circle, when you see a symbol in a circle like this, this means we're adding on the clock. You'll see a subtraction sign, multiplication and division. If we started then, or we took our pill at three, then we need to go eight hours more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We'd take the next one at 11 p.m. Now, would I? I don't know. I don't think I'd be awake, but that's how we're going to add. Remember when we add a 12 onto something, so if I'm starting at eight o'clock and I wanna add 12 hours or even subtract 12 hours from it, I'm gonna get back where I started because clocks are 12 full hours. All right, this is a table of clock arithmetic. It's simply just adding on the clock. So if I add, I'm at 12 noon now and I add 12 hours to that, it gets me right back to midnight, right? 12 hours more. If I add one hour to 12, I'm at one o'clock, two hours to 12, I'm at two o'clock, and so on. If we come down here to something like nine o'clock, if I add 12 hours to nine o'clock, I'm back at nine o'clock, just the other part of the day. If I add one hour, I'm at 10, two hours, I'm at 11, three hours, I'm at 12. If I add four hours to nine o'clock, though, I'm at one o'clock. So after the 12, we circle to the one. That's how the clock works. When we find sums or products, so addition or multiplication in a 12-hour clock, what we do is we use whole numbers. We divide by 12, and we take the remainder as the answer. We'll see this in a second. Honestly, in addition and subtraction on the clock, you can just count on the clock if it's easier for you. That's fine, too. Um, but there is another way to do it. Remember that if we add or subtract 12 on a clock, it's basically right back to where we started, just 12 hours before or later. This means that in the clock, 12 behaves like a zero does in regular addition and subtraction. It's the additive identity. So if we change to a five-hour clock, that would be the five. It is whatever the top um, number on that, on that clock is. So when we subtract in the 12 hour clock, we think about subtraction as, you know, turning back time sort of. We count on the clock starting at this first number in reverse, we count backwards. When we add, we count forward, okay? So if I wanted to figure out what two minus nine on the clock was, I'd start at two o'clock. I need my clock here, sorry. I'd start at two right here. Let me get a different color. That would probably help. Two. And then I'd count back nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh oh, eight, nine. And at that, I was missing a line on my clock. No, I wasn't. Yeah. This is five o'clock. So two minus nine on the clock 
is nine hours before 12, two o'clock, that gets me to five o'clock. Okay, we can think of this in terms of sort of turnaround facts. So if two minus nine is five, then we also know that two is equal to nine plus five, and we can check that. If we go five hours after nine, one, two, three, four, five, gets me to two o'clock. We'll come back to division. Let's do some examples. So take a second and try these. I drew a little clock here earlier just so we could have it when we're ready for it. I'll fix my numbers as we go. Six, seven, okay. So you took a minute and tried these. So we're starting with eight plus eight. So if I always start at the first number given. I'm going to start at eight o'clock and I'm going to go eight hours clockwise, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight gets me to four o'clock. So eight plus eight is four. For four minus 12, I'm going to start at the four and count back 12 hours. Well, you know what happens when we do, it's like a zero. So I'm going to end up once again at four o'clock. 4 minus 4, so once again we start at the 4, when we subtract we go counterclockwise. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So in clock arithmetic, 4 minus 4 is 12. 4 minus 8, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 4 minus 8 gets me to 8 o'clock. This is a counterclockwise. Okay, see how these work? Division is kind of tricky. Oh, I was adding in all my division signs. They disappeared and I missed one. Clock division is defined in terms of multiplication. So eight divided by five equals something in division. If and only if eight is equal to five times something for a number in the set of one through 12. Five times four is eight in clock arithmetic and eight is unique. So we know eight divided by five is four. So wait, let's try to see what that looks like. So on the clock, what we want to find in division is, is a number whose remainder is, uh, let's see, is gonna be eight when we multiply. Okay, so I can think of it this way. I can rewrite this as my, I rewrote this division problem, I need a different color, as multiplication. And what I'm gonna do is I want something that five times X gets me eight. What I really have to do is I wanna find something that five times whatever this number is X gives me a number with a remainder of eight when I divide it by 12, okay? That's what I'm really looking for. I wanna multiply it five times something so that when I divide it by 12, goes in however many times, and I don't care about that, eight is left over, okay? So let's think about it. Five times one is five, that doesn't work. Five times two is 10. 5 times 3 is 15. If I divided that by 12, I'd have 3 left over. 5 times 4 is 20. Ah, 20 divided by 12. 12 gives in once, and I have 8 left over. So that means 5 times 4 is 8, and 8 divided by 5 is 4. Okay? Division by 12, which is the additive identity, isn't something we do. Okay, it's not meaningful. You can't get a real answer out of it. So we're never gonna divide by 12 on the clock, just as a heads up. All right, so let's try a couple of these. So first do three times 11. Think about the remainder you'd get. So the way I think about these is I say three times 11 is 33. I don't know what number that is on the clock. It's 33 hours basically. If you were just gonna count what you would do on multiple, so let me back up a step. When we added and subtracted, we always started at that first number. When we multiply, we always start at midnight, okay? We start here. So one way to do this multiplication problem is I could start at 12 
and count 33 hours around. I mean, if I have all the time in the world. The other way to do this is to take that number, divide it by 12, because it's a full revolution around, right? And what I really want is the remainder. So 33 divided by 12 is 2. 2 times 12 is 24. 33 minus 24 is 9. So on the clock, 3 times 11, I'll just do it up here, is 9, because that's what the remainder was. All right, so let's try 2 divided by 7. I'm going to rewrite it. So I know that 2 equals, I'm going to rewrite it as multiplication, 7 times something. Okay. Well, I have to figure out something when I multiply it by 7 and I divide it by 12. Gets me some number with a remainder of 2. That's what I want to figure out. So let's see, 7 times 1 is 7. That's not going to work. 7 times 2 is 14. 14, 12 goes into 14 once. There's 2 left over. So it's 1 remainder 2. Okay. That means uh, da, 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 da. 7 times 2 gets me 2 o'clock. Okay. All right, let's try three divided by two. So again, we're gonna rewrite as multiplication. So three is equal to two times, I don't know, something. What I want is to have two times something divided by 12, get me some number with a remainder of three. Okay, well, let's see, two times, I'm going to have to pick something pretty big, right? Two times... Hmm, two times 12 is 24. That doesn't work. Two times 10. Hmm, two times... Oh, I got it. Nope. Two times 9, right? Hmm. Two times nine is 18. That doesn't get me a remainder. Hmm. Well, think about it. What do you think you're going to get? Two times, well, the one way to think about it is I want to get this thing multiplied by 12, right? I can multiply it by 12 on both sides. Let's see. Multiply by 12. I'm going to multiply 12 by the remainder. Let's see what happens. Those will cancel. So I'll get 2x equals, oh, look at this, 36 divided by 2. Divided by 2. Hmm. So x would equal 18. 18. I don't want the remainder of 3 there. I just want. 18 divided by 12 gets me one remainder of 6, okay? So the remainder I get here is 6. Well, let's think about if that works. Would 2 times 6 get me where I wanted to go? Would it get me to a 3? No. Hmm. What would get me to a 3? That doesn't work the way I wanted it to. 2 times... Well, let's try it again. We'll experiment. Two times something gets me to a three. So it's two times something divided by 12 gets me something with a remainder of three. Well, is it two times eight? Is it two times nine? Two times nine is 18. 12 goes into 18, I get a remainder of 6. That's not exactly right. 12, 2 times 11? Hmm. So it's interesting. Sometimes these just don't go because the division you're doing, not everything is well-defined on here. Not everything works out, okay? 
because we're sort of division sort of is forced into this multiplication process. It doesn't just like if we divide by 12, we can't get anything. It doesn't always go the way we want. I can't start here at the 12 and count by twos and ever end up at three o'clock, can I? So sometimes you're going to get stuff where you think like, well, that's weird. Okay. All right. We're going to leave this one be. So we can have whatever kind of clock we want, which is always interesting, right? I could make a six hour clock. I could make a five hour clock. I could make a 14 hour clock. Doesn't matter. Okay. The process remains the same. So if I, oh, another division sign. Yikes. If I wanted to add three plus four on this clock, I'd start at three. I'd go one, two, three, four hours around. That would get me to two. If I wanted to do two minus three, I'd start at two. And I'd go backwards three. That would get me to four. If I'm going to do two times four, that's eight. I'd start up here. And I'd count eight hours. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Gets me to three o'clock. Okay, all the processes are the same. Five is the additive identity. It's the zero, right? So if I add five to anything, it's one full revolution around. Excuse me. So we are going to go from clock addition to modular arithmetic. Modular arithmetic is related to clocks. It's also related to bases, but it's slightly different. The difference here is that zero is always the first digit. And the largest digit is one less than the module. So the module is whatever they tell you it is. If it's a seven, you get zero through six. If it's eight, you get zero through seven. If it's 12, you get zero through 11. Okay, that's what makes it different from the clock. What makes it different from counting in other bases is this is all you've got. So we go zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and on. There is no 10, there's no 11. You give zero through six, seven digits. Because there are seven digits, this is module seven, okay? So if we make an addition table in module five, let's see what happens. So we do zero plus zero is one, or sorry, zero. Zero plus one is one, zero plus two is two, zero plus three is three, zero plus four is four. One plus zero is one, one plus one is two, one plus two is three, great. One plus three is four. One plus four, I don't have a five, right? So what happens? What happens after I get to four when I count? Well, I go zero, one, two, three, four, zero, one, two, three, four, zero. So if I count five, I'd go one, two, sorry, one, what's wrong with me? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I end up at zero. So this gets a two, three, four. We know that five is the same as zero. What about six? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six is like another one. Okay, and you can see how this pattern carries. What's seven? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's another two. We're just counting around, okay? In modules, this is the sign. The symbol means congruent. It doesn't mean equal. They're not equivalent, okay? They're not exactly the same, but they're equivalent, or uh, sorry, congruent numbers. So four, three plus four was seven. We know that. On this chart, three plus four is congruent to two. So what we would write is three plus four and uh, mod five is congruent to two, okay? This means that when I divide um, by the value of the module by M, okay? Everything has the same remainder when they're in the same mod or or not, everything has the same remainder when they're congruent, pardon me. So in the mod five table, think about this. Six is congruent to one. We had two plus four, that was congruent to one. 
That's really because if I divided six by five, the remainder, I get a one with a remainder of one. That's congruent. What other numbers could you get where they would have a remainder of one? Well, we can make ourselves a little chart and here's how I like to make mine. I list the module numbers up here, two, three, four. And then I keep counting. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, okay, 15, let's count to 15. Things in the same column are congruent. So for example, let's take 11. 11 is congruent to one. We know that because if I take 11 and I divide it by five, which is M, it's the mod here, I get two remainder one. And it is the remainder that I am concerned with here, okay? I know that 12 is congruent to two because if I take 12 and I divide it by five, it goes in two times and the remainder is two. That's how I know which row, sorry, column it belongs in. Module class classes are the set of the numbers with the same remainder. So the ones in each column here is a module class. Okay, mod seven has seven classes, mod five has five classes. So if we look, we have one class, two class, three class, four class, five class, okay? So this is mod four. It has four module classes, zero, one, two, three. And then you can keep going. So you go zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay. Everything in this column is congruent to three in this mod. Everything in this column is congruent to two, congruent to one, congruent to zero. So if we're in mod four, let's figure out what 62 is congruent to. Now I can go through and, you know, count and like write out all the numbers into the chart. I don't really want to do that though. I'll be here forever. What I would rather do is calculate. So I could do 64, or sorry, 62, pardon me, divided by the value of my mod, which is a four. Four goes into 62. Let's see, four times 15 is 60. So 15 times with a remainder of two. That means that 62 is congruent to two. That's the column it will end in. Let's do 48. 48, well, let's see, 48, I'm gonna divide by four. Well, 48 is divisible by four. It's, it's 12 with the remainder zero. That means 48 is congruent to zero in mod four. That's the column it would end up in, okay. So now we can actually add and subtract and multiply in mods. It's crazy. But think about it. What we do is we do the operation the way we normally would, and then we figure out what that's congruent to. So we're in mod seven. Five plus four we know is equal to nine. Nine divided by seven is one, remainder two. So that's in mod seven, it's congruent to two. Six minus two is four, so it's just going to be four. Six times two is equal to 12. If we do 12 divided by seven, we get one remainder five. That means this is congruent to five. That's all it is. It's just a matter of making that chart, okay? We can also solve equations. So I want to know three minus five equals X in mod seven. That sounds crazy though. Like I'm taking away five from three. But you have to remember in mod seven, there's lots of threes and lots of fives. So I can count. Let's do zero, one, two, three, four. Let's see, I have zero through six in mod seven. Seven, eight, oops, nine. 11, 12, 13. All I need is a big enough number in the five column to, or sorry, in the three column to subtract away a five. So here's my three column. 
Now what I'm going to do is go to the next number that's big enough and subtract away 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. What column is that? I'm in the 5 column, so this is equivalent to 5. That's all it is. In this one, something minus 4 is equivalent to 3. It's congruent to. Pardon me. So let's see. I have to think about, let's count in mod 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. go this far. So what this basically says is I started somewhere, I counted back four, and I ended up in a, in a column that is three. So I can sort of reverse that, right? If I start in the column of three and I add four, I do the reverse operation, I'm going to get to where I started. Let's see what column that is. So I'm going to start here at the eight, that's in the column of three. I'm going to add four. One, two, three, four. I'm here. What column am I in? 2. So here, 2 minus 4 is equivalent to 3. All right, the last one is in mod 8. All right, so I have 1, or 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I'm going to go one column further. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Remember, because they're congruent, it doesn't matter where in the chart you start. So this says 5 minus something is equivalent to 7. Well, I'm going to start in the 5 column, right? 5, 13 is in the 5 column, and I want to get to 7. So how far back do I have to count? Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 5 minus 6, because that's how far I went, is equivalent to 7. Cool. We can um, solve multiplication by counting in that mod, okay? So again, I'm going to make myself a little chart in mod 5. Three, four, just like we've been doing. That's a nine, sorry. And then I can think about fours. We know some multiplication. We know that four times zero is zero and that goes in the zero column here. Four times one is four, that's in the four column. I got that. Four times two is eight, where's the eight? Well, it's a three, okay? Four times three is 12, 12 is in the two column. Four times four is 16, that's equivalent to one. I wanted to know four times something is equivalent to three. So which one of these does that? Two. So it's got to be a two here. Okay. All right. Four times something in mod eight gets me zero. Oh, sorry. That's a dog. So let's see. In mod eight, I go one, two, three, four, six. Seven. I get one through. I forgot the five. I knew I missed something. Okay. Well, four times zero is equivalent to zero, right? We know that. Four times nothing is nothing. Four times one is four. I've got that. Four times two would be eight. I didn't go far enough in my chart. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. 14, 15, 16. So what I want to see here, 4 times 2 is 8. What's 8 equivalent to? 0. Interesting. 4 times 3 is 12. What's 12 equivalent to? It's a 4. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 is equivalent to 0. So what this tells me is that in mod 8, there's a whole bunch of different answers that could go in for this X and get me an equivalency of zero. Okay. All right. One last kind of thing. This you're going to have to do some thinking on. So this is what we use modular arithmetic for sort of. This is a problem solving exercise. So you have a pilot and he's scheduled to fly, 
fly, pardon me, for five days and rest for three. So what I always do is sort of write it out. He's going to fly one, two, three, four, five days. And he's going to rest for three. Rest, rest, rest. Okay. So how many days is this schedule? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's eight days long, so that means I'm in mod eight technically, right? Because there's eight digits. It would be zero through seven technically. Today is the second day of the pilot's rest shift. So today she's here. We want to know if she's flying or resting 60 days from today. Well, how do we figure that out? Well, I know I'm in mod eight, so that's what I'm going to divide by. So I'm going to do 60 divided by eight. Eight goes into 60 seven times. I have a remainder of four. But that does not mean the fourth day here, right? She's not at the beginning of the cycle. So now what I do is count from here in the circle. She's on here. So one, two, three, four. Four days from now, she'll be flying. Okay? You try the next couple. See what you get. Pause. Do. All right. So for 90 days from today, we do the exact same thing. 90 divided by 8 is 11, so I get a remainder of 2. The remainder of 2 says, well, today she's here, so 1, 2. Two days from today, she'll be flying. 240 days. Well, 240 divided by 8 is 8 goes directly in to that. I get 30, remainder 0. So that means she's on today. So 240 days from today, she'll be resting. And then we have these other questions that make us work in reverse. Was she resting six days ago? Well, or sorry, flying six days ago. We just count back six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And the answer is yes. When we're flying 20 days ago, that's a little trickier, right? So you can start from where you are and do it the same way, or we can use division. So I could do, 20 divided by 8, that gets me 2 remainder 4. That means I'm going to count back 4 days. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Was she flying for 20 days ago? Yes. Yes, she was. There is a second one in here for you to try. You should try it. Okay? It works the same way, and you'll see this in the homework. But for now, that is where we're at. So try the homework and carry on. When you have questions, let me know.